Hi, I'm Bob Buckhorn, and welcome to another segment of the Mayor's Hour. You'll notice that my partner in crime, Jack Harris, is not here with us. Uh, due to a scheduling conflict, he will be back next month, but we've got a great show today. Uh, we're going to go visit uh, Brooks de Bartolo. It is a public charter school founded by Derek Brooks, uh, the Hall of Fame Tampa Bay Buccaneer, number 55, and another Tampa resident, uh, Eddie de Bartolo, who, whose family has developed uh, shopping malls all over the country uh, for decades. It, it is a great partnership, uh, but you're going to see why in just a few minutes. We're going to get a, to talk to the principal, uh, Ms. Bennett, but more importantly, we're going to get to see some of the amazing kids that are here and why you should be so proud of this school. Uh, stay with us. We will be right back with Ms. Bennett, and I can't wait to show you what's going on here at Brooks de Bartolo High School, another success story in the city of Tampa. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You want to keep this? I'd love to keep that. Can I hang that in my office? You know what that lo looks like? It looks like a tie. In the mayor's hour. <laughs> yeah. All right, Brian. All right, here we go. go. Here we go. This is the one-time winner. Nice. And he got it again. That's he it. lifted it. There you go. Yay. All right. <laughs> and I got my fate back. All right, I'm back with the lady who makes this place work. This is the principal of Brooks de Bartolo High School, Christine Bennett. It's nice to have you, Miss Bennett. Thank you, sir. Uh, I will revert to form calling you Miss Bennett because when I'm around principals, I get very, very nervous. Uh oh, don't worry, you haven't uh, done anything wrong. I know, but there's always that chance. <laughs> anyway, you're the boss here. Yes. This is your show. Tell us what is going on here. What, we're, what are we, what are we going to see? So here at Brooks de Bartolo, uh, very diverse population. We are a public charter school of choice. And tell us what the difference in that is. A traditional yeah. public and a charter school, okay. which is a public school, uh, no tuition. So we get the same amount of uh, per pupil funding from the state as the traditional public school down the road. The difference is millage, so property taxes. Right, so the parents get to choose whether or not they want to send their kids here. That is correct. So as a school of choice, students would need to apply to their charter school. Okay. And so here at Brooks de Bartolo, we have an application process, and then it goes into a public lottery. So when the number of applicants exceeds the number of seats, it must go into a lottery by state hmm. law. Interesting. So how does that differ from an IB program or other charter schools? Well, the charter school lottery would be the same among all charter right. schools. Uh, for an IB program um, and another magnet program, which is also a school of choice, is an application process where they can be very selective mm -hmm. of choosing who they're going to allow to enter into their program. So I guess the, the main difference there would be in a magnet program, you've got a specific uh, core uh, program where it might be uh, like t science and technology mm -hmm. focus or dance and performing arts. With a charter school, there also may be a focus, but here at Brooks de Bartolo, it really is about post secondary success and mm -hmm. preparing students for college and career. So we have a very traditional, broad program that's rigorous with dance and music and science and technology, advanced placement courses, dual enrollment courses. So really, it's meant to advance students and give them a lot of support. Whereas um, in a traditional public school, you may have a magnet, a specific program. Right. Within, within a right. traditional Are there, system. Is this the only choice high school? There are, so there are more than 40 charter schools in Hillsborough right, County. Right. You know, very, very many, a lot of choices. But there are seven high schools. Two are traditional in the sense of they're not uh, online hybrid brick and mm -hmm. mortar. We are solely brick and mortar and we're a traditional program being college prep. And so there's two traditional high school programs here in Hillsborough County. And who's County. the other one other than you? Uh, Bell Creek, okay. I believe, Academy okay. uh, added a high school. Okay. So w what goes on here? Why is this different? Why should it, why would a parent want to send their kids here? I would say the diversity. Other than you, of course. Well, no, no, no. It is really all about the people in the building. I have the honor and privilege of finding the best and brightest teachers and faculty and staff. That you can hire without going through the, the normal That's right. I, I like system. to think of the, the faculty and staff here as really the all-star team. I've been able to hand select 
those teachers who are passionate about uh, kids, that are caring, and having those individuals here with our students absolutely makes the difference. They invest their time in our students. They see where they are excelling, where they need help, and knowing them so well, individually, sometimes too well, mm -hmm. we spend more time with them than sometimes they do at home, that we get to know them so well, their dreams, their passions, their hopes, their fears, that we can then help them with whatever opportunities we see will help them excel. I, as I've been walking around this, this is a very diverse population. Uh, diverse, I would imagine, in ethnicity, income, areas of the county that they come from. Yes. Um, how many, and, and it's also small. So you, the students are gonna get that personal attention. How many kids do we have here? Uh, I know for parents, the classroom teacher ratio mm -hmm. is important as they think about sending their kid to a, uh, to a charter school. Tell us all of, of those things that if I was sitting out there watching, and I had a young seventh, eighth grader coming through the system. Mm -hmm. Why would they want to come to Brooks the Bar the Barlow? Well, first, I'd like to say that you know you being here is a big part of the decision making that parents thinking about sending their child to Brooks to Bartolow, it, that's a key uh, part of the decision. So we have monthly open houses mm -hmm. where parents and students can come in. We want them to come to our campus to see the diversity, to hear about our curriculum, to be within the school. Our average class sizes are 21. Mm -hmm. Some may be smaller because we have advanced placement classes that may be a little bit smaller, might be 15 to 17 students. But then we have PE classes that may be up to 30 students. Students. Our core classes are all capped at 25. Mm -hmm. So in a core class, there won't be more than 25 high school students within a class. And then per grade level, it's 150 per grade level for grades 9 through 12. And then we have 600 total students mm -hmm. for the four grades. So it's large enough that there's a diversity and kids aren't going to feel like they're with the same people all the time. But then it's small enough where with that student-teacher ratio, the teachers get to know their classmates really well. Um, socioeconomic status, it doesn't matter where you come from, what you have, if you're willing to learn, if you're willing to work hard, you've got people that are your cheerleaders and then are going to root for you and make sure that you succeed. Now you guys moved, I guess in 2007, that's when the school was established? We are in our 10th year, Okay. yes. And I remember when Derek and Mr. DeBartolo built this, it was in a Circuit City up off of Fowler. Fowler and 15th, right by the railroad tracks. And now you have 11 acres yes. uh, with the capacity to expand right off of the interstate, high visibility. Yeah. What are the future plans for Brooks to Bartolo in terms of expansion? We are so blessed to have this campus, 11 acres. We were playing PE in the parking lot, you oh, know, I remember. across. Yeah. And, and, you know, with our partnership with the city of Tampa, we were having gym at Copeland. Uh -huh. So now that we have our own gym here, you know, we've outgrown this gym. You can't imagine 600 of our whole, you know, uh, student body with the visiting team in that gym. So now we're looking to make sure that our students have the same opportunities facility-wise with athletics and physical education as they do academically. And that was always the core of what we did. So the field right across the parking lot here is primed and ready. Um, we would love to raise the funds to build an athletic facility Good. that could um, house lacrosse, soccer, possibly football. We already have a flag football team and also a field house. So it would be a larger gym that really would become a home under the Friday night lights, you know, that mm -hmm. home team yeah, feel yeah. Um, because a lot of our uh, courts and fields right now are off campus and those are our home away from home fields. What has, and I've known him for a long time and, and I think the world of the guy, what has Derek Brooks meant to this building to these kids to you guys um, you know for him this is a passion he didn't have to do this right. this was a leap of faith for him because it is not easy to get a charter school started and a charter high school high school in particular is even more difficult so to think that back in 2007 there were no traditional high school programs there were no choices for students who may be looking for a small environment, a college prep focus, 
making sure that they had rigorous coursework in a caring environment. If they only had their large traditional public high school to go to, maybe they couldn't afford tuition. Our philosophy that has resonated since 2007, since Mr. Brooks put that in the application, is that every student deserves a quality public education. Mm -hmm. So he walks the walk, he talks the talk, he is truly always humble and kind, and whenever he comes here to, li to deliver messages to the students, whenever the students see him out as a public figure, um, accepting awards or doing great things in the community, he is a true ro role model yeah, he because he, have he has taken his God-given gifts and talents and served others by doing so. You know, it's, uh, I have always admired that about him. Obviously, he's a very, very gifted athlete. Mm -hmm. and. Um, but he understand it's, understands it's more than just about that mm -hmm. and that he's going to take his fame, you know, and his, and his notoriety and do something positive right. with it that's going to have a much longer lasting impact than his athletic career. That's right. I mean, he's in the Hall of Fame and very and few so are. And so is Mr. D and now, Mr. too. So we got two too. Hall of Famers. So it's, those two guys deserve a lot of credit for having the dream to be able to do this and the patience because I know what it takes to, charter, to start a charter school. I was involved in one a number of years ago. Um, but to their credit, the product that you're producing goes off and represents those two men and you and the faculty here in pretty amazing ways. Uh, stay with us. We're going to get to meet uh, some of the amazing faculty that Ms. Bennett gets to, uh, to work with. And more importantly, we're going to get to see some of the kids that I know she is so proud of and I know that Derek Brooks and Mr. DeBarlo are proud of as well. So stick with us. We're going to come right back. Uh, this is the Mayor's Hour minus Jack Harris, but he's coming back next month. Um, we'll see you in just a little bit. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Well, my vision in starting the school was uh, very simple. I wanted to give kids uh, a private school education at a public school cost. Uh, in other words, I wanted to provide them the best education opportunity that I can and not charge them for that. And I wanted to be a very diverse school, uh, open to everybody, and I wanted to be a learning environment uh, strictly. And I wasn't interested in, in building a sports academy. Uh, I was very interested in building the next great academic institution here in Hillsborough County. When we first uh, started this journey, there was no public charter high schools uh, in the county. Dr. Fielder Swagger uh, was our first principal, and she and I met through uh, Deborah Brooks Charities, where she was one of the volunteer teachers uh, that taught classes uh, at uh, the Ebor City campus. Boys and Girls Club. So uh, we kind of met her through that relationship and uh, she was uh, you know, very <laughs> uh, ambitious uh, in sharing this idea and she decided uh, to come on and be our first principal. At first when I uh, visited with Dr. Swagger uh, about this idea, you know, she really got me to understand that what I was doing through Dare Brooks Charities was a school already. Uh, with our after-school programs and our self-help initiatives that we were doing. I actually was doing the school because I had a lot of teachers volunteering their time to teach these courses. So once I understood that concept, uh, 
then the idea, and a lot of praying, <laughs> the idea started to formalize. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say how, you know, eager and how thrilled I was that the DeBarlo family, when I approached them to be my partners, how they were very open uh, to this idea, uh, to take this journey with me. So we've accomplished a lot. Uh, there's been a lot of bumpy roads uh, along the way, but I wouldn't trade uh, any of those uh, bumps to make us what we are here today. Sometimes I, uh, I pinch myself and wonder why did Dr. Fielder Swagger put that idea in my head? Uh, because it has definitely uh, been watered uh, by the Lord and these seeds are continuing to grow each and every day here at Brooks Tomorrow. Oh, it makes me feel great. Uh, you know, and I start with the current leadership team, you know, with Miss Christine Bennett. And her and her staff continue to challenge our students uh, to get better and better every day. Uh, yes, we've achieved a lot, you know, from Blue Ribbon Awards to consecutive A's. And all those things are great. But we got to continue to motivate our kids that this is a learning institution for life. And we want to continue to challenge them in ways that we've never been challenged before. Our goal is to be the best in the country. And we don't shy away from, from that goal. And we want to take one step every day in reaching that goal. Our athletics have grown, and they've grown in the right way because it has been organic through our parents and through our students. Uh, there has been no involvement from myself or the DeBarlo family on encouraging anything. Uh, what we've done is support the clubs that want to get started, you know, whether it's baseball, basketball, you name it, uh, we've been there to support them. And I think that has supported the vision that we've been able to stay focused on what we saw the school as, but over time, you can start seeing the needs of the athletic program servicing our kids in that direction. And it's all them and parents. And that's the beautiful part of this partnership that we've grown now to the point where we have to go out and have a capital campaign to build an athletic facility because our students and our parents that support our students, they deserve that. So that's our next phase that we are on this mission now to expand, uh, build an uh, athletic facility with some additional uh, classrooms. The growth is rewarding, you know, from a Circuit City building uh, to now a campus. That in itself uh, is amazing. And it comes with uh, a lot of responsibility, but we are ready to step up and grab hold of that responsibility. And again, I go back to the students, they deserve it. They worked hard for it, and we've just done the best we can to keep up uh, with those deserving honors of our kids. So as we expanded from that one building to now a campus, uh, we want to fulfill this campus uh, with the love uh, that it deserves to support our kids, whether uh, through the classroom and uh, as well as athletics and performing arts. It means to me that they are life learners and the part of our mission statement uh, that supports that, that's what I want the kids to understand. And coming to Brooks DeBarlo Collegiate High School, we believe in you being a life learner. Uh, that means every single day you walk or step foot on this campus, there's an opportunity to learn. But it's an opportunity to give back as well. So we want that spirit uh, through our founders to carry on through our students. And thus far, we've been uh, pretty fortunate uh, that kids have that attitude uh, from our visionary standpoint and our staff as well. So it's extremely important that that relationship between the staff, the students, and the board of directors are all in one, in sync in one. You know, one vision, one mind, one step. done with your bike, donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community. 
which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Donate stuff, create jobs. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Welcome back. That was a great segment with my friend and great community leader, Derek Brooks. Uh, we, that's what we love about Derek, is he never stops giving back to this city. Uh, he realizes he had an amazing gift as a young athlete, but he also understands that he's got an ob obligation to give back and to build this next generation. And we are with one of the shining stars here at Brooks de Bartolo, someone who uh, I can tell already I'm going to be reading about, I'll probably end up working for. Uh, but this is a kid that is about to take us on a little journey here to show you um, how talented he is, but more importantly, what goes on here at Brooks de Bartolo. We are in the, the science lab. This is a place where I failed miserably, uh, but I'm glad to be surrounded by uh, some of the young people that uh, are so bright and so good. Uh, John Marr Fernandez, mm -hmm. yes, sir. who is a senior here at Brooks de Bartolo. Um, he, he loves computers and technology, and he is about to uh, show us some pretty, pretty cool things. Tell us what you love about this school. What I love about this school is that the diversity and how small it is, it's that and certain high schools have like their cliques, you know, seniors have their cliques, mm -hmm. um, freshmen have their cliques. But with here, my first year as a sophomore, I actually made more senior friends than sophomore friends. And everything, everybody knew me. It was such a small school and I love that. I love that the teachers want you to thrive and they challenge you every day. And that's what I mostly like. And so this is where you feel most comfortable, right here in this lab. <laughs> yes, I mean, sir. This is what you love to do. Uh, they've told me some amazing things about you, and you're going to show us some of those creations. But, but what is it about this science curriculum? And I saw some of your teachers here. And, um, what is it about this science curriculum that is preparing you for your next chapter in life? Uh, what the science curriculum is preparing me, it's preparing me by like giving me lessons of coding. It's giving me lessons of actually being a leader. It's giving me lessons of innovating. Mm -hmm. Innovating is something big, especially in this time of uh, life. There is a lot of innovators, and I want to be that next innovator. That's great. So you're learning how to code here as well? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then your next step as a senior is to go on to college, and you want to major in what? In computer hardware engineering. And then you want to do what? And come back in Tampa. Come back to Tampa. There we go. <laughs> That's the mayor's rule. you got to come back to Tampa because yes, you're that next generation. All right, so what is this? That I, I have no idea what I'm looking at. So you, tell me what all of this is. What this is is this is a ROV. It's a remoted operated vehicle. It's like, have you seen that movie? Uh, you've seen the Titanic, obviously. Yes. And you've seen the end part to where they send like this little mm -hmm. robot to observe like the insides of the mm -hmm. ships. Well, that's what this is. We uh, made this last year. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. They made this. You made this. We, the team you didn't buy this, this at uh, no, Best Buy? No, sir. Okay. We oh. made this from scratch last year. This has about uh, two cameras in the front, one in the back, one in the middle, and we have about four motors in there. And this is all being controlled by a joystick. Okay. You know, instead of playing for video games, you're controlling a robot. And so how does the robot move? I don't see any wheels on there. Is it normally on a platform that allows it to, to move? We're, yeah, we put it in, we submerge it in water. Okay, oh, okay. So yeah. you would just we, drop it down to wherever. Mm -hmm. And we complete tasks under the water. And uh, we go to competitions, we go to regional competitions, and we complete tasks that they tell us to do in a certain time frame and how much we can do it. So, and your class built this? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Huh. And Our so those, it, those yes. competitions, I know I've been out to Middleton and seen their, their lab there. Are they tough competitors for you on the robotics side of things? Yeah, we have, we have tough competitors. Uh, we used to have one named uh, Cor um, Cornerstone. Uh -huh. Cornerstone was our top competitors, but now they're reaching towards, uh, they go mostly towards international competitions right. instead of regional. So okay. it's uh, just us there. And so how did it, how did it work? Um, it works by here. Inside here we have two boards. These are bi-directional motor controllers. In simple terms, they're like the brain. 
They tell the motors what to do and what direction to do, how to do it, and how to execute that. Now, we, the cool things about these motors... You know you can't get through airport screening with this, right? Oh, we learned that the okay, hard way. Yeah. So I'm just, war I'm just yeah. warning you. Yeah. Um, so the cool things about these is that it controls two motors, and it's hooked up to this joystick controller. And right here, if you could see that, these are plugs called Anderson plugs, mm -hmm. and how they originated, they originated from um, radio control, uh, so they could just plug in and plug in. The cool thing about these is that they prevent me from um, putting in uh, wrong wires from like negative to positive mm -hmm. and all that stuff, to, so it prevents me to blow the whole thing and blow a lot of money up. Mm -hmm. um, and that's mostly it on what's going on here. Another cool thing that we have is the claw itself. That's this that's guy over Yeah. The claw was a bit heavy last year, um, but right now what we're planning to do is skim it down. And how that's being controlled is by the switch. So the switch controls this, the pinching movement. Mm -hmm. It's right here. So we put one switch up, and it's currently turned off, obviously. Mm -hmm. And this would push the silver block up and open it. And then we push it down, and this would push the silver block down and close. Mm. Yeah. And you guys built this here? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You sure? <laughs> I'm positive, yes. All right. What is, what is this? Uh, this is the surveillance box right now. And we had to do a lot of experimenting uh, with the surveillance box. At first, um, I had to check out what the uh, proper voltage of what, uh, the camera is we accidentally shot like more than what it could handle and we burned out a couple of cameras. So what I did is troubleshooting and that is one thing that my uh, teacher, Mr. Fernandez, taught me to do a lot. And um, what I found out is that this, the cameras can hold seven volts. And what I did is we grabbed the voltage regulator and this regulates and only shoots out seven volts. Maximum? Maximum, okay. yeah. Um, and that's what's mostly going on here. So what else do we have here? You have a 3D printer here. Mm -hmm. We have a 3D printer. This is a Wanhao uh, Duplicator 4. And this actually makes two colors oh. instead of one. Uh, we still haven't discovered how to make the two colors, but we found a different way of adding layers of colors into it. And that's with the Delta Maker over here. Uh, with the Delta Maker, that one is, it uses, um, more of, of different methods of printing, like air bridging. Uh, it has a higher speeds. And actually, a cool thing about that, that has a little computer that I have in my own personal computer in the bamboo or in the uh, cigar box. No, wait, I want you to understand. This kid made a computer in a cigar box. Go get that thing for us, John Mark. All right, yes, sir. I can barely run the computers that they give me. So this was. This is it. Let's hold this up so they can see this. Mm -hmm. This was a project over the summer, and this is a cigar box, and we made it into sort of a tablet. It's on currently, and I will hook it up for you. And this is the little computer right here. It's called a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, these are the types of things that are going on in this lab here, but I, I would submit to you that are going on in classrooms all over this school. Um, young people like this are getting the opportunity to do things in a nurturing environment, small classroom sizes, personal attention from the teachers. Uh, that's why uh, public charters work, is because of that reason. And uh, they're producing a product like this that's going to go on to do great things. So this is actually the server that controls the 3D printer. OK. And it's the same computer, the Raspberry Pi, is in there. And what I do is I go to the website, and this is the list of stuff. So. Let's go for something small that's printed in mm -hmm. 15 minutes. So I'm going to search up cube. And there it is, calibration cube. Mm -hmm. We run that for test if we see a little bit of malfunction in the quality of the printer. So there you go. And first, what it does is it heats up. And the process of how it prints is that it grabs an object, it slices it up, and it tells the machine how to work around the patterns and make the overall um, printing object. And here are some things that we have over here. This is actually, I scanned myself. And you scanned yourself? With that Xbox 360 Connect camera over here, sir. I think you need to make a full-size, 10-foot-tall 
Statue of the mayor. Yes. A mayor action figure. Yeah, absolutely. Mayor action figure. There we go. <laughs> Forget about Derek Brooks. You know, you can take care of the mayor, would you? Yes, sir. <laughs> So they actually made this on this 3D printer. It's amazing what 3D technology is allowing, and these 3D mm -hmm. printers um, are allowing people to do. Yes, sir. And here is one of Mr. Fernandez. Mr. Fernandez, where are you back there? Oh, there he is. You need a little work. <laughs> Hard to get a beard in the uh, 3D printer. <laughs> um, and this actually is, uh, it was supposed to be a Live Long and Prosper uh -huh. from Star Trek. And here, this actually demonstrates what the 3D printing does. This is a technique that's called the honeycombing technique to make it hollow and lightweight, and it would deal less time. Hmm. Yeah. We learned so our, our lesson with solid 3D printers to where we were printing something on the one how, and it actually took, oh, there it is. 72 hours, and we lost a lot of plastic, and it would just stop at the head. Huh. So yeah. how long will it take to make that 10-foot life-size? 10-foot life-size? Like, give me a month. A month? <laughs> I got plenty of time. You know, you're not graduating until the spring. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. And right now, it's uh, thinking on what to do in the protocols with that 3D printer, and then it's going to start printing soon. Sir. All right. Come back in a month, and we'll have a full-size statue of yours truly compliments of Brooks the Bartolo High School and this whiz kids right here. Uh, John Moore, thank you. Uh, keep up the good work. We're going to be following you. <laughs> and uh, we, want to, uh, we want to know that you're doing well when you go off to college and come back here to Tampa not too soon. No, thank uh, you. <laughs> you bet. It's a great kid. It's a great school. Uh, stay with us. We've got a lot more to show you here at Brooks the Bartolo High School. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Is the seat supposed to be forward-facing or rear-facing? Did they move to a booster seat too soon? It may be too late to check when you're on the road. Fortunately, you're on the couch. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Don't think you know. Know you know. Welcome back uh, to the Mayor's Hour. It's just me by myself. My buddy Jack Harris is not here today, slacker. <laughs> uh, but he will be back next month, and uh, you know he's going to regret missing this show because we really get to see um, an amazing institution and some really, really cool kids that are on the verge of doing something special because of the mentorship and the leadership of uh, Mr. DeBarlo and Derek Brooks and uh, some pretty amazing teachers, one of whom you're going to meet today, which is Coach Atkinson. Um, Coach, I spent a lot of years in gyms like this. Uh, the same smell. <laughs> <laughs> the same feeling when I walk into it. Um, tell us what you got going on here. You got some great kids that we're going to meet a little bit later on, but this is a wonderful place, and you guys got a great vibe going here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, thanks for noticing. And um, the biggest thing is, I mean, it's the people inside of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we'll be great if we were over on 15th Street where we started at. Um, and here, I mean, same thing. We got more space, so we're able to touch more lives. Um, and here and also in the gym when it comes to athletics, you know, we're limited when it comes to athletic space, but, you know, working with the city of Tampa and, you know, all of our different partners and the support from the board and our administration, we make it happen. Where there's a will, there's a way, and we, we love our kids and we go that extra mile for them. Now, you've been with Brooks DeBartolo since the beginning. That was 2007? 2007, yes. And you guys used to be up off of Fowler and Fowler basically was an old shopping center. Yes, old Circuit City yeah. used to be. Yes. And that's where all of this magic started. Oh, that's where it started. Um, it started with some great minds when it comes to our founding board. Um, it was a risk, and one of the best joys that we had is when we, when I, when it came to fruition that our diploma would actually be accredited. Right, sure. That was the big thing because if you have a, you have a school and your, your diploma don't mean anything, I mean it's going to be hard to get students sure, in. Sure. So that was a really, really, really big, really big windfall for us. And what year did that come? Because you have to go through a process as a public charter school. Correct. So how many years did it take to get it? I, I believe it was the second year that we came because the first year, you know, you stand and see if you actually want to be. Around, you know, if you got students, um, I believe the second year is when we got received our accreditation, and it's been, you know, rising to new highs ever since. And this building that we're in right now, this campus, used to be a church, right? Is that what it was prior? Correct. It used to be a church and also a charter school right across the street. Okay. So when the church went away, you guys were able to acquire this, yes, and really have multiplied your offerings significantly. Mm -hmm. So t tell me about the athletic program. Tell me what teams you have. Tell me what. 
what's involved? How are the kids doing? We currently offer 11 sports when it comes to athletics. Um, when actually, it equals about 19 teams when you have girls, boys, and also JV. Um, in the fall, we have cross country, volleyball, golf, bowling. Um, winter. I hear your bowling team is pretty good. Oh man, our bowling team is amazing. Amazing. They are um, actually with district champions this year with the boys, and we had two young ladies to represent us um, individually in the states. Um, winter, we have basketball, girls, and boys, soccer. Um, the spring, we have softball, baseball. Um, we just added boys volleyball. Um, we also have tennis too. Now, I'm an old lacrosse player. When are you going to put lacrosse in? Oh, man, as soon as we get that field built over there. And now, yeah, so tell, us, <laughs> tell me about the expansions. What, what do you guys contemplate? Um, what we, we, we actually want to build us a field house, you know, a place where we can, you know, have, our, have home games where we can fit everyone. As you see, you know, we only have one side of the, of the gym right now, but, I mean, like you say, we use what we have. But, uh -huh. you know, having athletic, true athletic facilities will help, you know, take us to that next level. And you're in the midst of a capital campaign to build those things, yes, right? Yes, we are. That's, and when did that start, and what are you attempting to raise? Um, we're attempting to raise enough money. I mean, if we can raise... If you we, heard that, didn't you? Enough we, money. So enough that they money. Can... We have a goal, but we're not going to stop there. Um, we've enough money to actually build the, um, the complex and also have it running. You know, you're going to need an operation fund and not just a building. You know, you're going to need lights. You're going to need the floor done. Sure. You're going to need equipment, weight room, storage, and all of that stuff. And that's what we're looking forward to because, um, like you said, we increase our... Our um, enrollment, we're almost up to 600 kids now That's from great. 234 when we were over at the other school. So the biggest thing is us having, you know, a place to call home and also, you know, it, it also comes with the community as well, you know, because they're going to be a big part of it too. Mm -hmm. You've got this big, nice building, you know, right off of 275, everyone sees. And mm -hmm. we just want to make sure that we represent the names on the building, the administration, and also our board correctly. And whatever resources they throw our way, we make sure we use it to the best we can. and. You know, and that's what we do for here for our kids. You know, I've heard uh, Derek Brooks talk about the importance of coaches in his life when he was mm -hmm. growing up. Oh, yeah. You know, from a very, very young age when he didn't think he was good enough to even play high school football and he was ready to quit mm -hmm. through Bobby Bowden and, you know, the, the leadership at Florida State. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about the coaches that are here and, you know, where do they come from? Mm -hmm. What is their role in the kids' lives? I mm -hmm. mean, it, it, uh, you guys play an important role in a young oh, athlete. Trust me, when the word coach, I mean, it, it, it just isn't in one bubble. When it comes to coach, I mean, your mom, dad, uncle, doctor, psychiatrist, all of that good stuff all into one. Um, the type of coaches that we have here, they're very high caliber. Um, majority of our coaches are here on campus as teachers, okay. our guest teachers, which is a good thing because they're around the kids. You know, they're not just seeing them after school at practice. They see them also, you know, um, during the school, they interact with their teachers, they interact with administration, and also, you know, just to know what's going on in their lives. Um, and we also do have some coaches that do not work here, mm -hmm. but we make sure that, like, as myself, I'll be that liaison between, you know, the coach who isn't here mm -hmm. and from the administration and letting them know what things are going on. But the coaches, is actually, it starts there. You know, it makes my job easier. You know, as athletic director, I just put the people in the right spots and let my coaches do what they have to do. Now, when I was a kid, and when you were a kid, PE was a big part of our life. Oh man, I lived for PE. Dude. Yeah, I mean, yeah. me too, because I wasn't such a good student. But, um, I was <laughs> good. At, pretty good. I was good at PE. Um, the school seems to have gotten away from PE, mm -hmm. certainly in the public school system. Are you guys able to provide that in you know, everyday opportunities for kids to go out and exercise and to be active? When, when it comes to kids being active. Um, even the schools that they are doing away with PE, they don't have to all put it on PE. Uh -huh. um, we, we stress a lot of cross-curricular type things. You can teach PE in the Spanish class, go outside, you know, uh -huh. dancing or something like that. You teach PE in the English class where you talk about Greek mythology and, you know, the Olympics and, you know, different type of things like that. But here, we need it because we have such a, you know, I won't say stressful, but we expect a lot when it comes uh -huh. to academics. The kids need a period where they can come run around, you know, scream and let that energy out. Because when they're in those classes for those 90 minutes, it's business. Sure. So uh, it's definitely important here, and we definitely recognize the importance of PE. So that's why we actually added a PE teacher two years ago, you know, to, to feel that. Because PE is, is one of those classes where the kids want to go to and also be able to, you know, just run off some energy. Put, that, put that cell phone down and go exactly, out and be a and just, kid. Exactly. And because, like I say, we have very, you know, our classes are very high demand, yeah. you know, and that's what makes it who we are. 
I'm waiting to see some banners hanging from uh, these rafters. District champs, state champs. Well, we got one. We don't want to put put too many up because we don't get so comfortable because we plan on putting them in the <laughs> other building when we raise that money. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's what we plan on doing. But we did. We added this one last year for our girls who um, they actually were state runner-ups last year in basketball for that's Class great. 5A. Um, we lost a tough one to Lake Highland Prep off uh -huh. in um. And Orlando. you compete in a tough district with Berkeley, oh, yeah. TC. Berkeley, and TC, um, Sarasota Military Academy, Cowden Mooney. Um, we're in a very tough district. So you got to um, play against that Kevin Knox kid? Oh, yeah, he's TC. amazing. Yeah, we've played him twice. He's, he's amazing and a great kid, too. I mean, yeah. that's, you know, sometimes when kids you like score a lot of points on you, are like, oh, my God, I didn't see this yeah. guy. But he's actually a good kid that we want to see do well. And he's representing our district. He's representing our, our city. You know, so when he goes off to school, they're not going to just be Tampa Catholics. That's the kid from Tampa. Yeah, he, he was know? just named as a McDonald's All-American. That's so, a great honor, yeah. too. That's a great honor. All right, Coach, keep up the good work here. I definitely will. You heard him. Uh, they're in the midst of a capital campaign. If you want to uh, help some great kids build an uh, even better athletic program, think about it. Um, Coach, thanks for being with us. I appreciate it. Uh, we're going to meet some of those kids coming up in just a minute. Stay with us, and you'll see exactly the kind of leaders that coaches like uh, this guy next to me are, are helping to build here. Uh, stay with us. We'll be right back. Morning, Gary. We are Get Schooled. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free, handsome, oh, I think we're breathtaking, and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, Chief. I got this. <laughs> Is that brand? <laughs> Colleges love extracurricular activities. That just really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to GetSchool.com for more info. It's not always easy being a dad. Do you have panda asthma, too? Does that run in the family? This is the home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts. But when you make an effort... Dad, we're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, sorry. Go along, son! It's always worth it. Whoa! Master! The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. I am gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Well, welcome back for another segment of the Mayor's Hour. Um, as we said earlier in the day, Jack Harris, my buddy, my partner, is not with us today, but he will be back. So it's just me surrounded by these kids who are a lot smarter than I am. So <laughs> th th this is where we get to meet the reason why uh, Mr. DeBartolo and Derek Brooks built this institution is for these young people that are here today and to give them the opportunity to excel in life and to be exposed to things in life that that they may not normally be, but this ultimately is the end product. These are the people that will be leaving this school uh, when they graduate, going on to do great things, and then coming back to Tampa, right? First and foremost, that's the, that's the one mayor rule, is that I expect you to go off to whatever schools you want to go to, but you got to come home to Tampa, because I need you here. So um, I'm going to give you a chance to meet some of these amazing young people, and we're going to start over here with you. If you could just tell us your name and what grade you're in. Um, my name is Janice Baez, and I'm a senior. Senior. I'm Jake Lair, and I'm also a senior. Okay. I'm Marielle Smith, and I'm a junior. I'm Kyra Soyan, and I'm a senior. I'm Daniel Villa, and I'm a sophomore. All right. Well, I have a uh, sophomore as well. Uh, I have two daughters, as you, you all probably know. Um, they are both at the Academy of the Holy Names. And so I live with girl drama every day. And, and I'm just saying that, that uh, it, it can be special. So let's start and we'll, we'll jump around. Why did you come here? What made you pick this school? Well, um, I've heard a lot of great things about this school, first of all. And um, I just heard that they are, everyone's nice in this school. So, um, and I recently moved here from Puerto Rico. Okay, so. Good. I was looking for a very small school, a small environment, so this school seemed perfect. Now, you had never lived outside of Puerto Rico before. This was your first? Yes. And I had really? to move here because my mom was getting cancer treatment at Moffin. At Moffin, oh, wow. Yeah. Well, hopefully she's doing okay. How was that transition for you coming from Puerto Rico to here? Well, 
Um, thanks to Brooks, it was easy because I was really scared of the new system and everything, but um, everyone here seemed really nice. They helped me, the counselors, everyone. Um, they all helped me get um, transitioned. Right, to acclimated to? Yeah. Now, based on this group here, this appears to be a pretty diverse student population. Mm -hmm. um, so you probably found it fairly easy. A lot of kids speak Spanish. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of kids, kids speak, speak Spanish here. Um, it was pretty easy to find friends and stuff. Good. And so you started this school year? Uh, no, I started halfway through last year. Last year, okay. But well, you look like a regular now. You're, <laughs> you're, Thank you. you. You enjoying Tampa? Yes, I very much Good, do. good. Yeah. And how about you? Um, I just, I came from a pretty small middle school with about 620-ish kids. Mm -hmm. And I knew, I liked the smaller environment instead of having 2,500 kids in your school, like 600 kids in the grade, something like that. I liked having the idea of just like 150 mm -hmm. kids in your grade. You get to know your teachers really well, build good relationships with them, get to know the whole student body, freshmen, the senior, all throughout, and it's just very um, cooperative. And have you found the smaller class size to be helpful to you? Very much so, because it's been it's been easier to like uh, gain confidence and getting to know your peers, and also just. Um, doing, uh, get, getting involved in anything you're interested in, uh -huh. and things of that nature, and also you have great um, relationships with the teachers, being able to ask them anything off hour during class. That's great. Whatever. And so what are your seniors, so what are you planning to do next year? So next year, um, I'm planning to go to college somewhere out of state. Uh -huh. I have not gotten my, any uh, acceptances yet, but okay. I but, start but you will. From, yeah. I will, yes, yeah. hopefully. But um, I start hearing from schools mostly in March and April. Okay. A few by the end of this month, but mostly March and April. And then from there, I'm um, getting a finance accounting degree, something like that, and yeah. wherever that takes me is yeah. um, where I'll end up. And what's your uh, preferred school? Um, Boston College. BC. Is, oh, okay, um, good for you. Definitely by far my yeah. number one. I just Same colors. Yeah, yeah, kind of. <laughs> All right, how about you? Um, well, I came from a private school, a private Jewish day school, mm -hmm. and Which I graduate um, Hillel Academy Hillel? of Tampa. Sure. Yeah. yeah, we only had 16 kids in my graduating class, so it was very small. So I didn't want to go to a big school, just like Jake. I wanted to go to a smaller school, and I had heard great things. And only one kid from Hillel had gone before mm -hmm. I had, so I heard great things, and I wanted to come here. Good. Where do most of the kids at Hillel go? Well, into the public school system? They go into the public school system, like Steinbrenner okay. is a big one. Right. But we also go to Robinson IB. We go to a lot of IB from Hello. Sure. Yeah. And what year are you? I'm a junior. Junior, so, okay. Yeah. So you have your senior year coming yes. up? Yes. Now, how, do you get your ring soon? I hope so. Okay. Now, how about you? Uh, I originally wanted to go to public school. I wanted to go to the same sister that my sister was going to. And which school was that? Wiregrass. Okay. Um, but my parents wanted me here and I was a little bit scared at first because you know I wanted to be with my big sister but I've grown a lot more even without her by myself. Sure, probably more so without her by yes. you had to find your own way. Yes, and I really enjoyed it. It's a great environment to find yourself in. Right. And so do you drive from do. Pasco County yes, down do. to here? Good, well, that's, that's a testimony to the school. <laughs> And do you see a lot of uh, Derek Brooks around the school? Sometimes, yeah. yes. He's a big fella. Yeah. <laughs> I used to be that big until I was the mayor. Okay. It kind of beat me down. <laughs> but you enjoy it here? I do. Good. And what do you want to study what, after this? I'd like to study psychology or sociology. Good for you. Okay. Any idea where you want to go to school? I'd like to go to Clemson. Wow. But definitely out of state. Just because they won the championship? <laughs> no, not just because they won, but that's a bonus. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of uh, Hillsboro or Bay Area kids that have gone to Clemson you know, mm -hmm. for some, particularly the football players. There's four or five of them from around here that play okay. for Clemson. Now, how about you? Well, I uh, was already acclimated to the small school environment coming from the same school, I think, that Jay came from. And where'd you guys come from? Uh, mm -hmm. Taylor's Community School. Okay. Oh, that's a great charter school. Yeah. yeah. And so you, being used to the charter school environment and everything, I actually wanted to make the jump to a public school with um, the Armwood Collegiate Program. Mm -hmm. They offer just about the same thing that Brooks does with uh, giving you opportunities to catch up with um, college and things like that during your actual high school experience. So I got really interested in collegiate programs like mm -hmm. that. And 
I definitely wanted to go to Armwood, but um, since my parents wanted me to come here and they had heard such amazing things about Brooks, then, I mean, I live in their house. <laughs> yeah, and I remind my daughter of that on occasion too. It doesn't seem to work. She thinks she owns the house and that she owns the cars and that she owns everything. Yeah, so after hearing the same things that my parents were hearing about Brooks, I decided, you know, I'm already used to the charter school environment. I'm already used to a smaller class setting with just about like 20, mm -hmm. roughly 20 students per class. And I just decided, you know, why not give it another go? That's great. And, and so tell me about, you're able to take college courses while you're here? Oh, yeah. And at, can uh, you start HGC. at, at what, what level? At to the sophomore year. They year? definitely recommend the summer in between um, freshman and sophomore year. That should be like when you start huh. taking the college classes. And do you take them online or do you physically go to HCC? They or? provide transportation mm -hmm. and they let us go um, during school hours. They, wow. We take that big old yellow bus out yeah. there yeah. Uh, <laughs> down the interstate to the Ebor campus. So you're, you are in a classroom of college age kids. Yes, sir. But you may be a 10th grader here at, at Brooks Bartle. Yes. yes. And, and how many courses can you take um, over the course, over the span of your career? As many as you can handle? You can take three courses every semester. Okay. So it actually lets you get your associate's degree mm -hmm. at the same time that you graduate high school. Wow. Knocks off two years of college. That's pretty impressive. It's a lot easier to get scholarships if you're only doing two years for your bachelor's. Yeah, so. but that would defeat the purpose of the 10 years I spent in college. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not. So uh, did you uh, take college classes? Yeah, but I was, um, I was a little late to that party. Yeah. I was, um, I took my time doing the uh, AP classes more so uh -huh. my sophomore, freshman, sophomore, and junior year. And then this year, I started the dual enrollment classes just to get a feel for it, get a little college right, environment, right. college classroom atmosphere. And it's uh, definitely a great tool. And cool. I, if I could go back, maybe I, I would definitely would have started earlier. So tell me the difference between, so you can be taking AP here at Brooks Bartolo and college courses. Yes. And, and what is, is there a criteria for admission to HCC? Do you have to have a certain grade point average? You yes. do. Yes. I believe it's a 3.0. Mm -hmm. And you do have to maintain it. And you also have to maintain your college GPA as well. Wow. You have to have at least a 2.0 college GPA yes. okay. while you're at HCC. So tell me about the extracurricular activities here. I mean, you've got the, the full complement of sports. Um, tell me about some of the other stuff, student government, the, the different clubs that normal high school kids you know get to experience yeah in fact one of the things I love most about about Brooks is that they gave me the opportunity to start my entrepreneurship club here at the uh, school oh, wow. and in partnership with junior achievement of Tampa Bay sure. so um, we are actually creating a company a student-run company um, and we're creating our product and launching it in a couple weeks. So oh, wow. it's very cool. So are you going to actually get to sell the product if, yes. it, if it makes sense? Yes. Is it a secret what the product is? Well, it's not a secret, but... Um, Don't divulge anything that you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it a secret for Okay, now. we'll keep it a secret. That's great. So, and, and how many students are in the Entrepreneur Club? Uh, roughly about 30-something. Huh. And are you guys all working on the same product? Yes, we are a... Um, a company as a whole. Mm -hmm. So we have departments. We have sales, marketing, supply chain, and finance. Oh, wow. Stuff. So hopefully we can make it to um, the, comp the national competition. That's great. Yeah. Well, good luck. Thank you. What about some of the other extracurricular activities that you guys do? Uh, I believe all of us are actually a part of Link Leader, mm -hmm. or except, except Daniel. Was, <laughs> um, okay. Uh, it's a, it's formerly known as Lift Leader, and now it's Click. Our assistant principal, Mr. Allen, started it, and it's a club where the upperclassmen teach the underclassmen different skills, like today our lesson was uh, integrity, mm -hmm. and so we read a passage on it and then underline things that we found that were important, and we talk about it, and we rate ourselves on these skills such as integrity and just talk about it all the struggles and we get to know each other better and help the underclassmen become better people that's great well it's a, probably easier to do in a smaller environment Definitely. for the seniors to provide 
you know, leadership skills and guidance to the uh, younger people. And it really creates a familiar environment mm -hmm. in the school too. Mm -hmm. So normally when you go to high school, you're looking at your own class, your own friends, and you kind of stay in mm -hmm. a clique. Here, you know, I know Cairo, I know Mariel, I know Jake, I know Jelenis, we're all friends. And I mean, with the small school environment, it's really easy to help keep that mm -hmm. friendship. So. Interesting. So how are the sports teams doing? Sports teams, you're going to be looking at Jake for that. <laughs> what do you play, Jake? I play baseball. Okay. So this is um, this this is going to be, hopefully, we have six, I believe, six seniors returning uh -huh. um, this year. And so hopefully we're looking up to a, a better season. Last year was a little rough, but we just moved up districts. And but, so who do you compete against? So in our district, um, for the, now the last two seasons, is um, Tampa Catholic, okay. Berkeley Prep, Tampa Prep, Cavalry Christian in Clearwater, and then uh, CCC also in Clearwater. Okay. And so, so they you got have some tough competition. Yeah, they, we have yeah. some uh, pretty good teams uh, up there. A lot of a lot of college, uh, a lot of kids going to the yeah. next level, D1, D2 schools, and we're um, we our team is pretty in size wise, like both in numbers and in, in physical size. Yeah. We're a lot smaller than them, but it's uh, we can when we're, when we, everything's going right, we uh, we compete pretty well. And so what varsity sports do you have? So we have um, baseball, basketball, um, tennis, soccer, both boys and girls for right. all that, uh, softball, golf, I believe, anything else? Tennis, bowling, bowling, volleyball. Bowling. Dance team. <laughs> dance team. Dance team. <laughs> the dance team? Yes, Okay. Dance team. What does the, the dance team do? You guys we compete? Uh, no, we don't, but we perform at pep rallies and we perform at um, half times of basketball games. Good. Good. You, you help the baseball players too? We probably could. <laughs> we, could we could probably use it. <laughs> this is why this place works. And I think what you're seeing right here in the answers, and, and, and bear in mind, these are 10th, 11th, 12th graders, and you, you hear that level of maturity, you, you hear that poise, you see that poise. Um, this is why this school works, and this is why we wanted to come and showcase what you guys are doing and what Mr. DeBartolo and Derek have started here, but ultimately it's all about you. I mean, you are the work product. And so I have n no doubt that all of you are going to be successful and go on to do great things. And uh, it's largely because of the education that you got here at Brooks de Bartolo. So uh, know that we're proud of you. Uh, know that we expect great things out of you. I have a number of you in the Mayor's Youth Corps um, over the years. And I love the kids from Brooks de Bartolo because, you know, you always rise to the occasion. So okay, go forth and do well. I'll probably see you because you're not going anywhere for two years. And, and you're a junior. And the rest of you, Seniors. senior, senior, senior. Uh, well, good luck. Don't mess up between now and the end of the year. <laughs> Don't get senioritis. You know, stay focused and go uh, go do great things, and then come back to Tampa. Um, we will see you next month. Um, I love coming here to places like this because I get energized by these young people. Uh, they make me feel good about what we're doing here, uh, and you should be energized as well. And just like the five of these bright young people that are going to go represent Tampa and then come home and make a difference in Tampa. Um, be proud of them like I am. We'll see you next month.